But fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. We're in for one crazy ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, hold on tight. You're in for one incredibly awesome ride tonight on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Tonight we have with us the hot lap hero, Chris Dolan, out of York, Pennsylvania, driver of the 7D Micro Sprint. So welcome to the show, Chris. Oh, thanks for having me, Josh. Yes. So, Chris, um, beans. We did the the Facebook version. Let's 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 start where it all began for you. Where did it all begin for you? Um. Well, I was about ten, I think, and my dad was like, "We should get you into RC cars." And then I was like, "I'll do that while I wait for a quarter midget." So then he just went out and he bought it, and I don't know. Uh, five years into that. He bought me a micro sprint and now we're racing that. Okay. So Chris, let's talk about, I know you have had a lot of success in your quarter midget career. So how much success have you had out of your quarter midget career? Uh, I mean, it was pretty successful. Um, we never ran nationals or anything. We ran some regionals, but uh, I, we won a lot at just local level. Okay. So Chris, let's talk now about, okay, you moved into micros. I know last year you did some pretty, had some pretty dominating performances. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's pretty awesome to see you have some pretty dominating performances. I know that one night you won the non-wing show. That was pretty awesome. So you want to talk about what it was like to transition over into a micro sprint from quarter midget? Oh uh, yeah. At first it was pretty hard. And I remember going to airport for the first practice session and the speed necessarily didn't make me nervous, but just the size of the car, uh, it was, I mean, a lot bigger than a quarter midget that had me a little nervous. And I went down in the corner and I was lifting, which in a 125, you really shouldn't be lifting because it's such a momentum car. And I was missing shifts and I was all over the place basically. And as the year got better or got longer on, I got better and I learned shifting points. I learned to not lift. I learned how to be smoother in a car and I just learned overall how to drive it until we did get to that point where we could run top five every race and then go out there and win at shell hammers. Okay. So Chris, let's talk about last year. You, um, I did find out that you were rookie of the year last year. That was pretty awesome. So oh, yeah. what was it, what was it like to be, to get the rookie of the year under your belt and just, yeah. I'd say it was refreshing. Because, I mean, there is one point in the year when we just blew a motor up every week. And, I mean, we pretty much wrote rookie of the year off. Like, that's not going to happen. And then we just got better somehow out of nowhere and started clawing our way back up to rookie of the year. And that was really my main goal for the racing season, to get rookie of the year. So it was really nice to get it. And then you were able to pull off a top 10 in points, which is pretty spectacular. You got sixth in points. So what are you looking forward to building on to this coming year as far as 2022? Um, I, I want to win a race at Lanco or Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. I think that that's what I really want to do. Um, overall, I want to get at least third in points there. I know we missed fifth by like 20 points last year. So I think it's doable, but I mean, if I really want to set a goal high, I think we can win the championship this year. Okay. So, okay. So now, Chris, let's talk here about, okay, what is your five-year plan with the racing? Where do you want to be at in five years? Um, I'm not really sure. Right now we are uh, in micro sprints, obviously. And just last year was our first year. So I think we're sticking around for about two more years. Uh, after that, we have a super sportsman waiting for us. Uh, we already have the chassis. That's a 350 motor, I believe. And then you bore it out and you yeah. just modify it a whole bunch. We're going to stay wingless with that for the first year, I think. Okay. And then we're going to put wing mounts on it and go winged racing with it. Okay. All righty. So, Chris, okay. What about your 10 year plan with racing? Where do you want to be at in 10 years? Um, in 10 years, I probably want to be in a 410. Um, okay, in a 410. Okay. Yeah. That might not happen because, I mean, those things are so expensive. But if I can get a ride with somebody, then I'll definitely take it. 
Okay. So Chris, let's talk now. Okay. What is the story behind the seven deep on your race car? Where did that all come from? Um, I got asked this question the other day in school, actually. And I, I told him, I don't really know. Cause I was always a big Jeff Gordon fan growing up and I would always race at the 24 and then I would go to play NASCAR games and the 24 yeah. was taken. So yeah. I think I selected seven one time just to see, and then it kind of stuck. And I selected that number for quarter midgets and my mom was like why not 24 and i was like i don't know and ever since then it stuck and then we added the d on because you can't have two of the same car numbers and someone is 7l yeah so then we put 7d and yeah okay so you know chris going into history a little bit the seven number in the world of nascar has been pretty, been pretty successful in the past um alan kawicki out of green uh, i can't think what the name of the town is out in wisconsin he actually won the nascar championship in car number seven so yes so, and he won out of his with his own team nevertheless and that, yeah. was, that was that was pretty successful year for him um yeah. but um chris let's talk now about okay communication between your driver the driver and the in your dad the crew chief how what is that like on a given weekend are is it is it get pretty frustrating or you guys get along pretty well or um i don't know if he can like stay calm on the way to the track it's usually pretty calm for the rest of the night between us but then again i mean i put the helmet on and some a flip switches or something changes and i just i get really aggressive and i mean I'll come in after a heat race and I'll complain about something and he'll be like, what do you mean? And then it just turns into a big argument. Both of us are frustrated. And usually it's my mom who has to calm us down. Okay. But I can't complain about another driver too much because my dad is too nervous that he can't watch the race. So I'll come in and I'll be like, did you see that guy cut me off down there? And he'll, he'll be like, what? No, I wasn't watching. I heard you had some pretty frustrating moments last year at, at, in your micro sprint. And, you know, your mom kind of got you calmed down there a couple of times and just said, let's not yeah. go there. And something about security got involved possibly. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That wasn't my proudest moment. <laughs> no, no, no. So Chris, okay. When you're at the track and you're getting ready to go out for hot laps, heat races feature, what helps get you in the zone and gets you focused to get behind the wheel of that race car? Um, I don't know. I really nothing. My own thoughts, really. I mean, when I'm like in the car, I don't want anybody to talk to me. So a lot of the times I'll have my dad come up to me and tell me what lines people are running. And while, yes, that is helpful, especially for someone like me who likes to just bang the boards, but it's not always there on a given week. Um, but a lot of the times I just tell them to leave me alone because that's, I mean, that really helps me get focused. I mean, I sit in the car and I plan out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, um, what is your favorite part about being a race car driver? Do you like the fans? Do you like the racing itself? Um, I just like racing. Yeah. <laughs> I like having fun. Okay. So Chris, <laughs> let's talk now about, um, you know, when it comes to your racetrack and your racing and stuff like that, what would you consider your home track that you race on nowadays? Um, I would consider it Lanco just because that's the place we started at. Um, okay. That is an hour and a half drive for us. But I mean, the only other track that we race at is an hour from us. So it's really hard to dedicate a home track when there's nothing around you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would, I would say Lanco. Okay, so Chris, let's talk now about, okay, Lanco is your home track. How big is Lanco? Uh, I think they said it was, I don't know, I'm on their website every day reading the rules. Um, I think they said it's an eighth of a mile track, so okay. I mean, it's a little bull ring. Okay, so Chris, um, little bull ring. Okay. So Chris, um, what was it like for you to pick up that non-wing win last year? What, what, what was, what was, what was that? What was it like after you crossed the finish line? Were you just kind of speechless or were you screaming or what was it like for you to be inside that helmet? Uh, it was a lot of screaming and fist pumping. I, uh, because me and this one guy, I mean, we were together all race and finally he pulled a slide job and then I just crossed him over and then threw a slide job on him and he crossed me over and we just went back and forth the final about three laps. So 
I saw him like the whole race and I was like, he's going to get me at some point. There's no way I'm going to hold on to this thing. And I crossed the line. I ran the bottom, which I hadn't done the whole race to just block the line or the slider or the crossover or anything that he was going to throw at me. And I crossed the line. I just, I mean, I went ballistic. Okay. So Chris, um, when it comes to, okay, you at the track, what are some favorite things you like to eat at your track that you race at? Man, um, I'll give it to Lanka. They have they have a good food place. Um, it's not your mama's kitchen or something. I don't know. Fantastic food. I like their chicken tenders, but um, they have this mashed potato bowl that they do at some Ooh. special nights. And I oh man, I go crazy for that stuff. So. Oh yes, yes, definitely. So Chris, okay, let's talk about who you have for sponsors on your race car. Uh, yeah, so we're sticking with the traditional Sykes Lawn Care, Creekside Auto Sales, Dolan Oil Service, uh, Tom's Paint and Body Shops on it. And then we brought in a manufacturing shop this year who uh, helped us out quite a bit. I think it's a Marion, a Marion. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a machine shop and they have helped us a lot so far this year. Um, American Oil Service too, they're staying on the car. and Yeah. <laughs> So I get a question, Chris. Okay, you got sponsors. Okay, one, are you still looking for sponsors? Oh, we are always looking for sponsors. Okay, if there's anybody out here watching this racing show, going to be watching this, get a hold of Chris Dolan or his dad, Greg, um, because they'd appreciate the sponsorship on Chris's race cars it gets for their news racing career. My other question for you, Chris, is if given the opportunity to um, be a part of a a bigger team type thing to share kind of concepts with another team as far as, you know, they race in a different class than you. Would you, would you like the help with that as far as being, as they know if they know a lot about motors and stuff like that? I would say, yeah. Um, okay. A lot of that relationship is, you know, uh, brought in throughout just friendships throughout racing. Yeah. So you already get that. But I think if you did have a team, it would be a little bit of a closer relation. Yeah. And, you would really be there to help each other. Okay. Okay. So Chris, um, who is the guy that you look up to in racing as far as sprint car, NASCAR, anything laying it all out on the table? Um, honestly, a lot of people laugh when I say this, I'm going to have to say Corey LaJoy because he runs in the back. I mean, a lot, a lot. He is, oh, yeah. he's struggled, but he claws for every position and he just, he never gives up. It doesn't matter if he's three laps down. He will stay out there for the whole 200 laps. And he drives for Spire Motorsports, right, Chris? Yeah. Okay. A little something you may not know about Spire Motorsports is they took over Alan Kowicki's racing shop. So yeah. that's where they're, they're located. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, Chris, okay, let's talk about when you're away from the racetrack, what do you like to do? Um. I've recently taken up working on cars, which is surprising because okay. I didn't had I had no interest in that before. Um, I do like me a game of golf, even though I'm not good at golf either. Um, a lot of the times I'll get on eye racing and just I don't know help with certain situations inside the race car. And it, I mean, it's a lot of different things. Yeah. So here's a question for you, Chris. Do you have a significant other now? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she takes up most of my time. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So have you bought her flowers and stuff like that for Valentine's Day? And I did. I, I actually did. I got her a candle, some flowers, and uh, this big, like, stuffed animal thing. Very cool. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Oh, so, thank Chris, you. Chris, um. I'll tell you what, um, another thing too, Chris, when you're strapped into that race car, what would you say is the worst thing that has happened to you as a race car driver? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Luck wise, I would say at Lanco this year, we were running up in like fourth and this was at the beginning of the year. Okay. So, I mean, it, it was the best run I've had going ever. And I, um, I took the back of somebody in the front wing panel, like fell off. So they put me to the back. And then I was charging my way through the field. I was up to like seventh or something from dead last. And I had the spark plug go out and it basically blew the motor. And yeah, um, for just the worst crash I've ever taken, 
I uh, was in a quarter minute. I just went head on into the wall, and I mean, instant pain to the back. It was the worst Ooh. hit I've ever taken. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So Chris, um, what do you have in your race car to help protect you from getting hurt? Um, I have a full containment seat, which a lot of guys, I don't know if they don't agree with it or something. I don't see a harm to it. I mean, I think it's there for the better. Uh, a Hans device. Um, and I have a Bell helmet. I mean, great helmet. Simpson race belts. I just got a new fire suit. So I'd say I'm pretty well protected. Okay. So Chris, um, two, do you have any other crazy stories you'd like to share with us about your racing career? Like situations you've been in and man, this has been just say, so you know what, this is something like, you know, this is, was the craziest moment I've ever been in, you know, racing wise on the racetrack. Um, yeah, it, it was the same night that the spark plug went out after I got sent to the rear. It was the very first restart. And I don't know. I mean, you probably saw the clip of, I think it was Logan CB mm -hmm. at Lenko yeah. riding yeah. up on the wall and then driving straight yeah. down after yeah. a wreck. Yeah. I was, flying around the outside i don't even know why because it was not there that night but i figured i'd go up there so i was like fifth gear pinned and i see this car stopped on the banking and it's right up next to the wall but there's a car right next to it and there's not enough of a gap in the middle and i knew i wasn't going to make it back down to the bottom so i put it up on the wall and i did a little logan cd and i rode oh. up on it and came right back down and oh. it was a code brown I, I I bet your dad was was not too thrilled with you that night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so Chris, okay, let's talk now about okay, when you're at the racetrack and after the racing night's over, what do you do when fans come up to you? Do you do you just say, hey, can I sign your autograph? Da 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 da. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I always like to talk to people. Um, yeah. No, I mean, I don't care if I know you or not. You know, it's just, yeah. it's nice to have that interaction, Um, you know, and if they want an autograph, I'll gladly give it. I mean, like I said, I'll talk to anybody. Okay. So, Chris, let's talk now about, okay, what type of racing chassis are you running in, in your micro sprints? Uh, we got a 2016 RTS this year. and Okay. I mean, that's the same that we had last year. Um, fantastic. And the guys at RTS, they always help out a lot. Um, you know, they they have parts in stock a lot. I mean, their fabrication shop's pretty good. And, I mean, How about yeah. your sportsman? What kind of chassis you're going to be running in sportsman? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure. Uh, okay. I was, I was getting ready for work one day. My dad came to me and he was like, do you want a super sportsman? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, okay, I'm going to get it. <laughs> and okay. by the time I came back from work, there was a super sportsman chassis in the garage. Wow. Wow. So Chris, um, let's talk now about, okay. Can you teach me some stuff about your 125 uh, micro sprint? Cause I don't know a lot about the 125 portion of, of micro sprint racing. Um, yeah, it's basically, I mean, it's a mini sprint car as the name says, yeah. um, you have a top wing and there's wing sliders with that. You can angle it, but a lot of guys just run it flat because less drag. Okay. Um, the front wing is optional. You don't have to run that, but we always like to. Um, you got shocks, and you can put adjustable shocks for rebounds on each one. The motor, just a 125 uh, CR Honda, I think. Okay. Uh, we get ours done by Bob Albright. Um, there's certain regulations. It has six gears, uh, but you really only use five um, okay. unless the track is really fast. Okay. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Chris, um, okay. We talked about what you'd like to do away from the track. What, okay. What grade are you in in school now? Oh, uh, I'm in 11th grade. I'm a, I'm a junior. Wow. You're a junior. So next year you'll be a senior. Yeah. Don't remind me. <laughs> oh, oh, you've got to send me a graduation invite for you so I can try and figure out a way to get out there. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, let's talk about, okay. You're called the hot lap hero. Where does that come from? Um, I don't really, I, I do know. Um, for some reason, I'm always fast in hot laps. I mean, I was always like fourth or fifth or whenever someone read the names off at the top of the times in hot laps, I somehow managed to be on that. But then there are nights that I got in the heat race and I would drop like a rock. So, oh. and I don't know, I'd always like, 
try to give the car as much as it could take in hot laps just to see what the track had. And okay, I mean, I, I would go out there and I would rip the top and then cut down and somebody. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, hot lap yeah. hero. <laughs> okay. So, Chris, um, sprint car wise, who have you talked to in the sprint car world that you that you're pretty good friends with in the sprint car world? Um, not a lot of people. Cameron Smith has been a help a lot. He races 358s around okay. here. And Tim Gladfelder, we knew them from quarter midgets. He races okay. four tens around here. Okay. Um, sportsman wise, we talked to guys like Steve Wilbur and Luke Lanker. And I mean, Steve, he's a legend in that series. Okay. Um, we're trying to expand our horizons here. <laughs> okay. 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 So Chris, um, thank you very much for being on the show with me tonight. Talk to us about your racing career and, you know, you, you have a bright future ahead of you in the racing world. I, I look, I, I, I give you that. That's, 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 that's your huge thing there. Um, thank you. you know, you kind of, you kind of remind me of somebody, Chris, and I'll kind of throw this out there. Um, you get a chance pull up YouTube, um, look up Eric Medlin. You kind of remind me a lot of Eric Medlin. Eric Medlin was a top fuel funny car driver. He drove for John Force for a few years and um, was tragically taken from us in a, in a funny car accident. But his dad and him were just like you and your dad do. And he says, you know, um, his dad didn't know a lot about Eric, except for that, you know, he loved being around cars. He loved racing. And then all at once, he says, you know, I found something out about Eric after he passed away. He had a file folder in his filing cabinet that was fans. And he had every time a fan would give him something, he'd put it in that file. So you kind of yeah. remind me a lot of him. You kind of do. Yeah. yeah. Yo, yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up later. <laughs> yeah. And one thing with Eric, too, is, you know, he'd always say, you know, hey, um, after the racing was done for the day, he'd be like, hey, do you want to go to a movie? You want to go uh, go? go to ice cream and, and everybody's like hey are you ser serious about this he's like yeah he says my philosophy is um you can't be sad or upset if you have ice cream you you have to be happy when you when you eat ice cream yes yeah yes yes <laughs> yeah yes but yes definitely so chris thank you very much for being on the racing show with me tonight before i let you go who is all on your racing crew who helps you work on that race car um it is pretty small it's really just uh my dad, myself, and my mom, um, we, we pull up in the Ford Explorer with a tiny trailer that we can barely fit the car in. And it's really just the three of us. And, you know, we, we get some help some, from some friends um, occasionally and our neighbors at the track help us a lot. But overall, it's just the three of us who work on the car. Okay. okay. So what does your mom do with, with your racing? Um she i mean she records every single lap that i do and i'm okay I, I i look back at it and i study it and i say this is what i can improve on this is what can go and that helps a lot a lot of the time she is just there to call me and my dad down like i said before does she go and get um, your lineups for your heat races and features for you or? um no just because she doesn't know a lot of the car numbers and who they are yeah. so okay. i like to go up and look at it and say you need to get around this guy or just follow this guy through and yeah okay okay so chris do you have anything out there you want to say to the kids to help get them in a race car that kind of look uh, the kids that look up to you i i can help with this i was a kid who wanted to drive a lot i mean all i wanted to do was race um it sounds stupid if you're not in a race car beg your dad beg your mom just nag at them every chance you get throw a little shot in there saying i want a race car eventually they're going to have to budge. Um, and once you get in that race car, just don't give up, throttle down, be smooth, be fast. One thing about it, about it you got to get your um, place of work on board as a sponsor on your race car. That's, that would be huge. I, I already asked them and they said, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Big okay. Blow. Okay. But thank you very much for being on the race to show with me tonight, Chris, I will call you in a few minutes to thank you in person because I've got something pretty special I want to talk to you about. So yes, okay. definitely, definitely. So thank you very much, Chris. I will talk to you in a few minutes. Yep. See ya. See ya. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk a little NASCAR news wise. Last weekend, Kyle Larson went out and won the NASCAR race in California. So congratulations to Kyle Larson. 
Um, also, ladies and gentlemen, Scott McLaughlin picked up the win in the IndyCar series in the number three Penske racing car. So congratulations to Scott McLaughlin for kicking off his season. And Pato, um, uh, I want to say Pato, Pato Award, I believe, is running really well this year. Definitely. Um, so good luck to, to Pato Award. Um, but um, also, ladies and gentlemen, um, definitely... Greg Biffle is set to make another start in NASCAR racing this coming weekend. So great. Good luck to Greg Biffle. Um, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, nothing really big in, in racing except for Robert Height picked up the top fuel funny car um, win again this last weekend. So he's got two wins on the season. So congratulations to Robert Height. Um, that's going to be an interesting NHRA series to watch because Robert Height is whew, he's really good um, and, and all the classes in HRA along with IndyCar and NASCAR are going to be interesting to watch so um, with that being said ladies and gentlemen you have a good day catch you later on another episode of the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show hashtag one on YouTube with that being said be sure to go hit the like subscribe and hit that notification button on the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show hashtag one on YouTube so you can get all the latest videos that we've got out and everything that's that's going to be happening um, we'll be talking about that um, but with that being said ladies and gentlemen have a good day catch you later on another episode of the Josh Nolan Full Throttle Racing Show hashtag one on YouTube <laughs>